So further fallout from the story with Boeing. Oh, yeah. Everyone is asking questions. What exactly happened? Well, first of all, I've got an article to pull up from RT just to trigger the libs. Multiple noncompliance issues exposed in Boeing safety audit. So the U.S. safety audit of Boeing's 737 MAX 9 manufacturing process ordered in the wake of, of an airline's midair door blowout earlier this year has found dozens and say it with me, folks, what could possibly go wrong, especially to people in the back, of quality control shortcomings, including the use of disc soap and a hotel key card as makeshift tools. I slammed my chair so hard the light went out in my studio. Okay, there you go. Fixed it. Boom. I got to fix that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about the 737 Max malf malfunctioning and my light goes out. Okay, I'll try not to be too mean. The New York Times reported on Tuesday that the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration, the FFA, identified 97 non-compliance issues at Boeing and failed the aircraft marker on 33 out of 89 product audits. Yeah, because when using disc soap and hotel key cards as makeshift tools, I mean, you know, I I'm, I'm not an engineering expert. I, I know nothing about building planes. I know nothing of the mechanics of, you know, airplane safety. But, you know, wh when I think the work on, they got tools, stuff made out of metal, like grab certain wrenches and bolts and power drills and everything. You know, I'm, I'm just shooting off the hip here. But if you were to say, hey, kid, they use soap and hotel key cards. I'm going to look at that and just, 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 and, and, and I'm going to, I'm going to use that line. From idiocracy, when the CEO of Brando said, hey, the stock market's crashing. It's not good. Not good. Stock market crashing. Not good. Airplane you're using makeshift tools of dish soap and hotel key cards. Not good. And I better see in the comments section as well. Not good. Because that's not good. It really isn't. In fact, it's, it's rather frightening. Although the agency did not release a copy of its report to the public, the FAA administrator, Michael Whitt uh, Whittaker, said in a statement that Boeing must make reforms to ensure that its jets, are, jets are safe. No shit! No freaking shit, Mr. FFA administrator! Hey, Pete Buttigieg, where are you at? Where are you at, Petey? This won't be back to business as usual for Boeing, Whittaker said. They must commit to real and profound improvements. Oh, Oh, you sweet angel. You think Boeing's going to do improvements? Oh, he's he's innocent. He's a virgin. Sweet little virgin angel. Oh, how, how sad. The FFA also conducted audits on fuselages produced by Boeing supplier Spirit Aero Aerosystems, reportedly finding safety shortcomings in seven out of 13 cases. That's rather frightening. Investigators saw Spirit mechanics putting dish soap on a door seal. You know, this is a side note. You know, a part of me really wants to go ahead and make another trip to Japan, you know, soon before the whole world ends, before AI takes over. And it will. And it will. Don't debate me on this. AI will take over the planet. But, you know, I mean, I, you know, it's just, it's just the older I get and I look at all these things. When I was growing up as a kid, you know, I remember, you know, my old man. RIP, you know, would say like, you know, there's a whole system put in place to make sure things are working properly. Schools would say the same thing. All our institutions would say the same thing. But as the older I get and I'm seeing things falling apart, I'm just wondering, like, it's all a lie. Hey, this soap. Putting this soap on as a door seat. Now, this soap, you know, you use that to wash dishes. I use that to wash dishes. A door seal? As a lubricant to lift up process. Okay. The uh, New York Times reported the workers also use a key card to check the seal of the door and wipe away the dish soap with a wet cheesecloth. Oh, God. We're not going to make it, are we? The safety review was ordered after January 5th. Alaska Airlines flout inbound to uh, for California uh, for Portland, Oregon, had to turn back after a door panel blew off at 16,000 feet in the air, injuring several of the uh, 171 passengers aboard. Hey, talk about a window seat. The FFA temporarily grounded all 737 MAX 9 jets in the U.S. for safety inspections. Alaska Airlines said it found loose bolts on many of the Boeing's planes in its, in its fleet. 
So, okay. Uh, people of Alaska, I guess I'm never going to be making that flight out there. Someday. Just not today. <laughs> Until I know that all of those bolts are not loose. I might have to make the, the journey on foot or by old school fashioned train or horse and carriage. We shall see. Boeing airliners have been involved in multiple safety incidents in recent days. A 737 MAX 8 operated by United Airlines rolled off a runway and tilted onto its side after landing in Houston on Friday. A day earlier, an Osaka, oh no, Osaka, the Osaka, Chicago's sister city, Osaka-bound Boeing 777 operated by United was diverted after a tire fell off its landing gear upon takeoff in San Francisco. At least 50 people on the Boeing 787 operated by Latham Airlines were injured on Monday when the jet heading to New Zealand from Australia went to a sudden nosedive slamming passengers into the ceiling because of what the air carrier described as a technical event. No, that's called an uh-oh moment. An uh-oh moment. A serious uh-oh moment. The 737 MAX Boeing top seller airline was grounded by aviation regulators around the world in March of 2019 after crashes in Ethiopia and Indonesia killed a combined 346 people. Wow. So, hey, I sure hope that there is a heroic whistleblower that will say something. I sure hope that there's somebody that will say something and suspiciously won't somehow be found dead, which I find completely suspicious. But, hey, hey. What do I know, right? Hey, Nick, take it away, man. Oh, don't. Hang on. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Was found dead in an apparent suicide in a hotel parking lot. John Barnett was a quality manager for Boeing for 32 years, and he was giving a series of interviews where he was exposing Boeing for violating safety regulations for profit. One of the things that John Barnett exposed is how Boeing would take defective parts and then recycle them on new planes in order to prevent production delays and reduce production costs. So essentially, Boeing was building planes out of trash. Ever since he retired in 2017, John Barnett has been trying to get his safety concerns out there. So the corporate media and the police would have us believe right when his story is about to get out there, right when Boeing is about to be held accountable, now that his testimony is more important than ever, that's when he commits suicide? Yeah, there's something wrong there. I mean, shoot, I, I would be ready. It'd be like, it'd be like the whole, I, I would be doing the I told you so dance. But remember, Boeing is connected to many Democratic and Republican politicians as well as the military industrial complex, uh, Wall Street, big banks, and other corporations. And we all know the rules here. In America, the bad guy is the hero. And the hero's the bad guy. <sighs> These jagoff politicians, honestly, it's and Boeing don't don't pretend to be innocent. And let's and let's just say right now, it was you know there, there's nothing Boeing can say right now that can make them look good. I mean, Boeing, you're the ones, especially management, upper management, upper management at Boeing, you're the ones that turned a blind eye willingly or just didn't give a damn at all about setting out subpar, mediocre, dangerous aircrafts that your consumers will get on and use. I mean, I don't know. Like, again, I, I you know, there's an episode of Seinfeld where George Costanza is confronting his boss, right? And his boss is very lazy. And George just said to him, don't you care? This is your business. Your name's on the building. And obviously, I guess no one at Boeing really cares. Why wouldn't he wait until after the interviews are done instead of committing suicide in the middle of the case? The police investigating this story are apparently the least curious motherfuckers ever. They said he killed himself in a hotel parking lot. Why not kill yourself in the hotel? It may be just me, but a hotel parking lot seems like a place you would die if you are being targeted by an assassin, especially an assassin who knows exactly where you are staying. And I'm not kidding here. We need the police to come out and explain in great detail how they knew that this was a self-inflicted wound because this story is obviously fucking shady. 
Yeah, just like that guy, first name Jeffrey, last name E, in this huge security prison building. There was cameras on them and two security guards, but then somehow, out of the blue, and this is crazy, I hope you're sitting down. Hey, sip that coffee and swallow it. No pun intended. Swallow it and listen, 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 listen to this, because this is a kicker, right? But somehow, all the cameras went out, power went out. The two guards, oh, well, I mean, they're working hard. They're both taking a nap, a nappy nap like this. And, oh, no, Jeffrey E. was ha hanged. and uh, Oh, God, he took his own life. Self-deletion. Until the autopsy showed something else. Doesn't raise any red flags. Right, folks? Right? But I need you to understand, the criminals in our ruling class understands this. These stories are meant to send a chilling message to future whistleblowers that they can and they will kill you. They will get away with it and then they will slander your name by saying you committed suicide. Shout out to Nick from RBN and does some great work for Hotspot. So uh, yeah, obviously corporate media, they're going to be adding in their own two cents. So again, I think everybody should be demanding more action from the police and the detectives Private investigators. I'm very curious what the autopsy is going to say because I want to see where exactly that round went. Because if it shows that he's got a, a double tap in the back of the head, it's kind of difficult to kind of do that with your arm like this. It's it's a little suspicious. Just I, I'm 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 just saying, folks. I'm just saying. It don't add up. Now to Boeing in the spotlight. A whistleblower who raised safety concerns has been found dead. Authorities saying he took his own life. And it comes as we learn new details about a terrifying mid-air drop involving a Boeing plane. Here's Tom Costello. The focus for investigators, that terrifying nosedive off New Zealand that injured dozens. Passengers say the LATAM pilot claimed he suddenly lost control of the Boeing 787 when the flight data computers went dark. God, that would scare the crap out of me. I'm willing to bet that pilot got, he's like, you know, a lot of these pilots have been flying the air for 20, you know, 30 plus years, right? Everything goes dark. Like, what the hell? <laughs> uh, you know, I remember my grandpa he used to say, you know, flying, it used to be different. It used to be a lot. To, and, and folks, if, if, if you, if you want to shed a tear for maybe how things used to be, kind of look back at how, how, how flying was done back in the day. Hell. You could smoke on an airplane. Not not saying I encourage it, but, you know, classy times in the 1950s when we used to have lead in our paint. Hashtag make America great again, right? <laughs> in 2016, the FAA issued an airworthiness directive for the 787, warning that if the flight control computers are not reset every 22 days, they could shut themselves down, which could result in flight controls that don't respond and a temporary loss of controllability. Investigators will look at whether the airplane was completely depowered at one point in the last three weeks. Meanwhile, two months since that mid-air MAX 9 emergency, sources close to the investigation say Boeing has failed 33 of 89 FAA audits. The FAA confirming it identified non-compliance issues in Boeing's manufacturing process control, parts handling and storage, and product control. If we see something that requires us to, to cease production or pull something down, we'll do that. In an email, Boeing's chief of commercial planes today called on every employee to precisely follow every step of our manufacturing procedures and processes. Hey, let's have democracy in the chat. Type one for kit. Now that Boeing's on the case, our airplanes are going to build properly from now on. Everything's going to be hey, okay. Type two, man. They just said that and let's go right back to business as usual. These corporations are going to think, think Norfolk Southern actually held it, itself accountable after all those train derailments. I wonder how many twos will get in the chat. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. While in South Carolina, a coroner says former Boeing whistleblower John Barnett took his own life before his upcoming trial against the company. I would like a second opinion, please. 
In 2019, Barnett told NBC News Boeing was putting profits ahead of safety. From day one, it's just all been about schedule and hurry up and just get it done, push your planes out. In a statement, Boeing says we are saddened by Mr. Barnett's passing and our thoughts are with his family and friends. Under intense scrutiny, the company today called on every employee to be on the lookout for safety or quality issues <laughs> and speak up. <laughs> Lester? Tom, thanks. Oh, to speak up and look out for... Yeah, okay, after they made an example of that boy? Oh, hell no! Look, people should be demanding answers because let's face it, if you're 16,000 feet, 20,000 feet in the air, you know, I think... There's a level of trust that people have to put in not only to the pilot and to the crew, but also in the engineers and, and people who build and design these airplanes that they're going to, you know, get them from point A to point B. Now, theoretically, I would assume that 100 percent of the world's populace, that's right, all seven billion of you beautiful people would agree with me. I, 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 I would. I'm going to say that maybe I hope all of you would agree. It's one of those things, a real bonding mode for humanity. Yes, airplanes should be put together properly, properly, and go from point A to point B. Everyone gets off the airplane and, oh, hey, la da da, isn't it nice being here? But apparently, Boeing doesn't think so. Boeing just does all for that short profit. And that whistleblower is right now gone, deceased. And there are many other whistleblowers out there who have. You know, raise concerns, and I, I am, I, I am really concerned for their safety, for their well-being. This is America. You're punished for doing the right thing.